just like what we were, um, what I was thinking of sharing, the problem is here and we are looking the solution elsewhere. So also in the process of purification that we have been um, reading from some of Mother and Sri Aurobindo's writings, we are too much concerned often about the purification of other people, <laughs> whereas what really needs to concern us is our own purification, which is a um, uh, enormous task. As we have been reading from the Mother and Sri Aurobindo that there are knots that tie us to the lower nature and they have to be loosened. In the old yogas, they were undone, but in this yoga, they have to be, of course, undone, but the field has to be made ready for the reception and welcome of the Lord, which makes it a doubly difficult task. Uh, in the traditional yoga, the field has to be left to the forces of lower nature, and we have to go to the home of the Lord. So the ideal was to enter into some Vaikuntha or some trance of bliss and merge oneself into the higher self. But here the lower nature has to be prepared for the welcome of the higher self. And that is why it becomes a much more onerous and difficult task. Indeed, if the new world has to be not just an ideal dream, or a distant far off gleam which we discuss in seminars and uh, talk about <laughs> because that's the easiest thing, then the process of purification is indispensable. Shobindo says in Savitri, none can reach heaven who has not passed through hell. One can see this symbol in almost all the mythologies. Sita must pass through the process of fire so that she can once again reunite with her eternal Lord Rama because Sita, the earth nature, is usurped by the Asura and even when the Asura is defeated, the stamp remains and she must pass through the purifying flame. This is the symbol. Again we find Christ's story that Christ the body must be crucified for Christ the spirit to triumph over humanity. Buddha, the great hero, Sri has described him as a great hero in one of his Bangla poems. And he says, contrast it with what later Buddhism made of him, an escapist. But he was a hero who tramples over desire and ignorance and ego. He must renounce the world so that he can return upon the world with compassion of a Maitri Amitabh and, re, and, and give to this world the law, the dharma. This seems to be an indispensable need. The mother speaks of the indispensable process of purification without which the supermind cannot find room in a consciousness that is riddled with lower nature. Of course, it can find room, but then it will smash and break it. It will not be able to bear the touch of that flame and fire. Therefore, the process is long, the journey seems difficult, sometimes interminably long. And last week we were sharing some of the uh, ways and methods by which one can assist this process. This is done by grace, but by learning to stand back, by refusing assent to the repeated assaults, it becomes easier and easier to walk the way. And yet it is not so easy as it seems. And Sri would tell us why it is so difficult because he has gone deep into the uh, regions where none has gone and seen what is it that supports this entire lower nature as if like a thorn by the side of rose. And this is another unique element of Sri yoga that we find in the uh, ancient traditions uh, we can almost metaphorically see that in the age of Rama, you have the good people in Ayodhya and the bad people in Lanka. So it's very easy. Uh, the good people have to march and destroy the bad people and things are very simple. So Krishna makes it a little more complicated. So Krishna is born from his maternal side. There are very difficult people. Kansa is from his maternal side. 
and from his paternal side there are very nice people the kunti and pandavas are from the paternal side his place of birth is governed by the asuric nature the place where he is brought up vrindavan there are guardians of light gop and gopi literally means keepers of light literally the word signifies so there are beings of light with whom he interacts in vrindavan and close by there is mathura again they are kin pandavas and kauravas are close kin so the difficulties are brought closer then we have in shurabindu's age they are brought still closer in the same human being there is the light and the shadow and therefore the mother says it is a sign that the battle has become very decisive it has entered a decisive phase speaking of the supramental action upon earth the mother says that one of the things that will happen which one can see happening today is good is becoming better and better and bad and evil is becoming worse and worse she has spoken of this it is as if there are two forces as the action increases and the parts that are open to light they respond and blossom the contrary force becomes tougher and tougher and poses greater and greater difficulties in savitri we have a very beautiful description when savitri and death confront each other as death poses uh, questions there it's in the form of questions and challenges savitri responds as savitri responds death poses still more difficult and more complex questions it shows all the negations and it carries on right up to the highest point where he says all right you speak of divine there is divine there is this higher self maybe i don't care but he is elsewhere so you please go there and leave satyavan and this earth to me and even then savitri insists that no i claim him for this earth then he poses the most difficult of all questions he says i know you have knowledge but do you have the power so in this yoga again we find it's a double sadhana it's not just a uh, assimilation of knowledge which is a different kind of yoga where vedantic yoga where one can discover the essential knowledge the truth of the divine the truth of this world but also the sadhana of power where one has to become a vehicle and vessel of that great power which is there behind all the movements of this universe so it makes the process of purification not only more indispensable but even more difficult and complex to make it easier because if one were to really work upon every aspect of human nature it would be difficult divine has arranged it in an occult way uh, made it a little more simpler for all of us and of course for himself so the easy part of it is as they say the bad news and the good news the bad news is that we have to work there is no no shortcut shobindo puts it in a very simple letter there is nothing like yoga made easy like french without tears i do not know what it really means um there are so many languages which are really <laughs> you can't learn but surely it shows that it's difficult to learn french without you know just uh, it's not an easy shortcut so he says there is nothing like yoga made easy it is a process it is a difficult journey and one has to be armed with the patience of a traveler the mother uses a simile that one must be armed with the patience of a person who is out to discover new continents which means one should be armed with the patience that i may never reach the journey or i may reach and may get stuck up may not be able to come back so she uses uh, she has uh, explained it so beautifully that it's a real adventure whose end is certain victory but the path to which is new and unforeseen and therefore she says that is why i told you it is a spiritual adventure so this is the having given this difficult side of the news shobindo gives us the good side of the story that don't worry each one does not have to tackle with everything in every one there is one particular difficulty which is the most painful and obstinate spot of resistance and shobindo has used a term to it this term is actually not used by shobindo for the first time it is there it exists in the psychological literature and shobindo has emphasized it in one of his letters to the mother early letters shobindo speaks of this evil persona 
So, this evil persona, which is like a persona is a mask. So, in all of us, there is a contradiction to the aspiration that we carry. And very interestingly, this contradiction is the door. It is almost like the homeopathic principle. In one of the places, Shurabindu says, there is a lot of similarity between homeopathy and yoga. And one of the similarities is that like cures like. So in us, we carry that contradiction. Precisely our central difficulty is that, which we are meant to realize. And if we work upon this central difficulty, we will realize what we are meant to embody, that aspect of the divine. But as we know that we are so busy working on the central difficulty of everybody else that we forget our own. So here is a short letter. It's written to the mother. So its letter is very, very interesting. Shobindu says, What you say about the evil persona interests me greatly as it answers to my consistent experience that a person greatly endowed for the work has always or almost always perhaps one ought not to make a too rigid universal rule about these things. Now the rigid universal rule is that the reverse is not true. He is speaking person endowed with an ex exceptional possibility has attached to him. It does not mean that the person who is having enormous problems in nature means he has an exceptional possibility, though it may be true in far off times, eventually. But right now, Shurabindu is telling us that a person who is greatly endowed for the work has a being attached to him, sometimes appearing like a part of him, which is just the contradiction of the thing he eventually represents in the work to be done. It is as if to make it easier, right from childhood, we are given a difficulty which is like our persistent challenge. And actually if we see this is how nature has evolved everything. In fact, in the entire evolutionary journey, uh, one of the modifications of Darwinian theory was the Lamarck's theory. And this theory precisely brought this out, that how exactly giraffes developed tall neck, precisely because they were goats who had to strain up to eat. The place where they were staying, they had to strain up to eat, and they, the, over successive generations, they developed the uh, tall neck. This is one of the explanations. And exactly when faced with a difficulty and challenge, nature um, creates ways and means by which it can be solved. There are so many examples of this. Just the contradiction of the thing, he centrally represents in the work to be done. Which means if somebody is born to uh, realize something on the physical plane, he will carry in himself the most obstinate resistance of material nature. It may be in the form of inertia, it may be in the form of thought, it may be in the form of, at the vital level, the most obstinate resistance of material nature, almost its opposite. Or, if it is not there at first, not bound to his personality, a force of this kind enters into his environment as soon as he begins his movement to realize. So in some people right from childhood, they are born with this difficulty. And one sees it very interestingly even in some of the past characters. For instance, in Hanuman's life, his, his past, if one sees his childhood, extremely naughty, restless, vital. We have quite a few children here with this exceptional difficulty and an exceptional possibility. And he is so naughty that even the holy people are worried. They don't want anywhere his closeness. And he goes to the extent that he swallows the sun. And he has to be made to forget all his capacities till one day he will recover them by the grace of the Lord. So here, right from childhood or Sri Aurobindo says, sometimes it enters as soon as he begins the movement of yoga. This explains many things that we find uncomfortable or difficult to understand. That the moment one begins to undertake an inner life, problems that one had never seen or known, it begins to emerge and attach to oneself. Shubindu himself uh, speaks of, of course not in this context, but he speaks of how at a very early age, when he was seven, uh, when he was lying down in, uh, in his school in Darjeeling, how he saw a great darkness enter and envelop him. And it left him only when he came back to India after the full journey. 
So these beings take that that comes. Of course, he has taken in himself the universal difficulty and the universal burden. He has not spoken about it except in one of his letters where Shivinda says, the mother had to take ten times more than me the difficulties of universal nature. And then he says, if we did not take it upon ourselves and did not work upon it, we could not tell you or we had no right to tell you that it can be done. It's because we have done it in ourselves that we can tell you. So here Shobindra is telling us that it, it, is, it, is, it happens. Its business seems to be to oppose, to create stumblings and wrong conditions. Why would it do it? It appears very strange. That's why the sages have said, divine Leela nobody can understand. Why would those who are meant to realize something face all the oppositions of the world, whereas those who are not so meant find their path very easy? There is a little joke about it, that there was a nun who really believed in Christ right from his, her core. And one day, as it happened that the whole place, the nunnery was swept by a flood and you know she was also thrown out and in the flood as she was going looking for something to hold on to save herself and she is praying to God and she hears a voice, those who are my friends, I treat them like this and she replies under her breath, that's why you have so few friends. So it's... It's true and it's difficult to understand it. So Shurabindu is telling us why this is so. Its business seems to be to oppose, to create stumblings and wrong conditions. In a word, to set before him the whole problem of the work he has started to do. Almost like we are all Helen Keller in disguise. So we must start with blindness, with darkness and therefore creation gives the maximum possibility when it starts like that. The mother gives a very poetic, beautiful example. She says, look what happened when the one consciousness uh, divided itself into many. That was a moment of great torment. If you really um, look at it from that point of view, the one burning light in the firmament, it splits and becomes millions and millions. And she says, but look, when this happened, they became the many stars in the night and they became like jewels and the galaxies drifting apart. So this is given with a purpose. It seems as if the problem could not in the occult economy of things be solved otherwise than by the predestined instrument making the difficulty his own. So the instrument which must be purified and realize something takes upon itself that very difficulty. Now it makes the yoga very, very difficult and very complex because one can literally justify anything. As said when Shirobindra speaks of renunciation, he has made it very clear that we are not talking of outer renunciation. When he speaks of purity, he doesn't talk of moral purity, ethical purity, spotless sainthood. These are Shirobindra's words. And he makes it very clear why he is not speaking of this because otherwise the ego can hide under very, very beautiful garbs. And uh, in, when he speaks of renunciation in the synthesis, Shurabindu says that it's not, uh, ego has this tendency to almost act according to the environment it lives in. And it wears the garb which is most appealing to the environment. And Shurabindu says that it can be very dangerous. And then he gives two examples from history that how the ego can play and play and wear a garb. That imagine when Arjuna, who is driven to fight by the Rajasik ego of the Kshatriya, recoils from the Tamasik ego and Sri Krishna bids him to rise to a greater level and fight. And then he gives another example, the example of Rama, where on one side we see Rama renouncing the whole kingdom, on the other side marching with a whole army to Lanka, for what? To retrieve his wife. Now, if one were to look at it from a purely pragmatic standpoint, one would say this is an egoistic action. Why should a person uh, make a whole army march? After all, for what? Just to get back his wife? Now, Sri Aurobindo tells us, no, it's not about that. It's about, in fact, this is an ego which, it's an action which transcends the ego. It is to establish a greater truth upon earth that Rama is acting. 
whereas to an outer eye it may look as if he is attached to his wife and is attached to his prestige and is attached to his honor but none of these is true in this situation so it's such a subtle thing and one can almost because the whole criteria is inside when mother was asked that uh, she has written this play virtues it's not a play it's a story but can be modified into a play i think it was also staged here as a play and she was asked you have spoken of so many qualities but which of these virtues is the one which is indispensable and the best and she said sincerity and it is really so very true because there is no other way one can really um, take a step forward except through sincerity because only then one can see whether this is really a difficulty which one is struggling with or it is just one of those things which one has taken upon one's nature to give a little story when there was someone who we know you know there were all kinds of uh, people and she has gathered all kinds of people in her uh, shivji ka barat you know where <laughs> everybody is there and uh, there was this person who used to be um, prone to taking drinks and get drunk and when mother was asked that why is he being tolerated she said you don't know my child if he was in himalayas he would have been a great yogi he has taken this difficulty upon himself to work upon it now it's very difficult to see from the outside or understand it it is either his own soul or the divine who knows why and what it is so here the mother is telling us that uh, shubhendra is telling us as if in the occult economy of things be solved otherwise than by the predestined instrument making the difficulty his own the instrument identifies with this difficulty so that one can work upon it that would explain many things that seem very disconcerting on the surface this letter written somewhere between obviously 1914 to 1919 is so relevant even today and the mother <clears throat> makes a comment on this letter she quotes this letter much later in her evening classes and then she makes a remark observation if you have a part to play a mission to fulfill you will always carry in yourself the main difficulty preventing you from realizing it it's so interesting it is like a key which is given to us there are two keys one is the key that opens the door the other is precisely where the key has to be applied if we apply it at that point then the door gets open so she says it's really fills everybody with hope that you will always carry in yourself the main difficulty preventing you from realizing it so that you have within your reach the victory you must win and this is a uh, big problem because often there are problems which are very easy for us and we see it in others and find why is the person struggling with this difficulty but that person is finds other difficulties very easy which are very difficult for us because for each one there is a particular difficulty which is given and then she tells us if you had to fight against a difficulty which is everywhere on earth it would be very difficult you would need to have a very vast consciousness and a very great power only divine mother and shurbindo can do that having all the darkness around and inside them to transform but for us they have given us small little problems not big problems because we are in kindergarten so the problem they have given us is a little difficulty you tackle greed you tackle anger you tackle fear this fair enough and simple enough so she is telling us that while if you carry in your own nature just the shadow or defect you must conquer well it is there within your reach you see all the time the effects of this thing and can fight it directly immediately it is a very practical organization this is divine wisdom that if a child is born to uh, realize you know become a gama pahalwan so right from childhood he will get punishments like this go stand in utkatashan uh, you know or do 10 times dand baithak this used to be punishment earlier now then there was a time when there was no punishment now there is a new trend uh, i was reading that in uh, in china or some place uh, i forget the place they have given a unique punishment to children 
the punishment is that they will do yoga asanas <laughs> it's very interesting so that teacher was asked what is this you are giving he said no this is very good in the name of punishment you actually end up helping yourself so this is so nice that <laughs> it's a wonderful punishment that you actually help yourself so divine this is is very interesting because it's the sign of new consciousness in the divine arrangement of things what we regard as punishment from the divine is actually a grace it's an occult arrangement so that it makes the process easier for us so mother is telling us that it makes it it's a very practical organization you haven't seen in the bulletin the letter of shirobindo the evil persona it is very well explained there then she speaks about this letter then she uh, makes it still further in fact uh, in the vedas each rishi was a representative type we have spoken of this earlier that how every human being is a representative and before the supramental descent the mother would say each of you represents an impossibility probably nobody noticed that she has used the word impossibility but later on she says remember i told you that each one of you represents an impossibility now i will not say that i would say each one of you represents a difficulty to be solved so this is hope from impossibility we have become difficulty so we are like cases in divine hospital where he is treating us it's a easier way to look at it rather than imagine that we are some great sadhaks doing some <laughs> great yoga and she is helping us to get rid of the shadows and bring in its place the light so she is telling us the nature of your difficulty indicates the nature of the victory you will gain the victory you will exemplify in yoga now in this yoga why it is so why not in other yogas because the goal is to realize the self the one self is the same everywhere and in all things the static self so it really doesn't matter whereas in this yoga each one has to manifest an as aspect or maybe more than one aspect a few aspects of the infinite personality of the one infinite godhead so therefore there has to be parts of nature which has to be molded specifically to express and manifest that because it's about divine manifestation she was asked that will everybody be the same in the supramental world both mother and shobindo in different ways he says why do you imagine that means everybody will do everything no it will not be like that some people will manifest one aspect of the supramental light and consciousness some others will manifest some other aspect and that's why it's such a beautiful yoga which is where we will see that no two human beings even though they are on the same path are actually on the same path this is the beauty of this yoga each has his own unique problem and each one expresses a unique possibility and a unique manifestation of the divine so she is telling us thus if there is a persistent selfishness it points to a realization of universality as your most prominent achievement in the future so if we find ourselves uh, crowded by selfishness within that means we will one day realize the maximum universality that is possible not only within even in the outward circumstances in one of the prayers of the mother she says if a being finds himself surrounded by very easy circumstances if he does not find himself surrounded by bitterness criticism and revolt that means the mission you have given him to accomplish is very little so it's difficult to see uh, which is really grace and what is not grace all our notions change thus if there is a persistent selfishness it points to a realization of universality and when selfishness is there you have also the power to reverse this very difficulty into its opposite a victory of utter wideness those who are extremely selfish by nature she is telling us will realize utmost wideness and that difficulty haunts them and all the problems that arise because of this will always surround them like a shadow will always chase them like a fetter tied to the feet and the more one advances the more one struggles against this one difficulty almost one can helplessly say that why this is sticking on to me and that's where the secret lies when you have something to realize you will have an in you just the characteristic which is the contradiction of that something 
because by struggling in, in, with it the power go, grows the more we struggle with this difficulty the more the power to realize that particular thing uh, awakens in us to take a very common place example uh, we have these tragedies which are built around love and it's strange that tragedies of love have also an appeal to human nature of course love should be victorious shobindo speaks of it uh, savitri's love is victorious but it is as if each time a being imagine a story where uh, two people or at a very human level love each other and everything is fine and happy there is hardly any love in it but when they face difficulties and opposition the power of love grows inside and it can grow to a point where in spite of death love remains now this is a kind of victory it's just a very human example that how this opposition actually is meant to increase that's why uh, in savitri when shobindo describes this power he says the burning test of the godhead in its past parts and death to begin with says why are you coming after satyavan he is dead you go back very soon you will find somebody else very soon you will see that your heart is attracted to someone else charmed by another face and form you are only thinking temporarily that satyavan is the one to whom you are meant to be together and that is one of the subtlest test and savitri says no i have not loved him by the flesh i have loved him from the soul and therefore where he whether he is here or there i have chosen and this is the um test of my love this is the first test she passes as if if this were not there her love itself would not bring out the best in herself so shobindo is telling us uh, mother is telling us face to face with this defect the difficulty you say oh i am like that how awful awful it is but you ought to see the truth of the situation so what we should say we should not get disappointed disheartened oh my god i am 60 70 still this is a problem i have not got over on the contrary till the last breath we should say my difficulty shows me clearly what i have ultimately to represent to reach the absolute negation of it the quality at the other pole this is my mission shubindo says in one of his aphorism if the world was not essentially the very opposite of the divine it would not have the possibility of becoming the divine it's very interesting in another of aphorism he says this world was built by cruelty cruelty is the opposite of it's the most um, farthest from the divine this world was built by cruelty so that love may inhabit it it was built by death so that life may find room in it it's very very interesting as if by opposing the power that comes is the greatest and that is why we have always before the avatar comes or around their time the darkest periods of history as if if there is no kansa krishna would not come people are too satisfied in mathura paying income tax to kansa and they are very happy till kansa's atyachar becomes worse and worse and worse <laughs> then even the sages and seers are tormented and then they cry ultimately where are you please come down so that brings down the great intervention the same thing we find at every epoch of history just around shorbindo's birth if we really look 100 years back what a world completely overtaken by darkness unconsciousness division ignorance everything frightening possible whether it be hitler on one side or imperialism on the other or the most violent kind of marxist communism or we see freudian theories of animal psychology that is threatening this world and shurbindo around this period comes takes into himself all this darkness and transmutes it so we have here mother telling us look my child tell rather this is my mission even in ordinary life we have sometimes the experience of contraries he who is very timid and has no courage in front of circumstances proves capable of bearing the most there are people there are instances actually in real life people who were cowards in their childhood who turned out to be great heroes in certain situations 
uh, in the life of some freedom fighters we find this real instance that how when faced with a situation suddenly the heroism in them came out and when the situation was gone they themselves could not believe that I could have done this, I could have gone through this. To one who has the aspiration for the divine, the difficulty which is always before him is the door by which he will attain God in his own individual manner. If that difficulty he can conquer, then the floodgates are open. Till then, he tries everything, but that he must conquer, that he must remove, that he must change, and then the floodgates open. It is his particular path towards the divine realization. There is also the fact that if somebody has a hundred difficulties, it means he will have a tremendous realization. Thank goodness, mother is giving us a lot of hope. So, <laughs> of course, <laughs> the, we should not, as you know, it's such an intrinsic thing that it is not to justify difficulties. She is telling us that if there are, your path is riddled with problems, it means perhaps that the divine has taken your resolution very seriously. In one of the places he says this, that if you find yourself surrounded by problems and difficulties, uh, take it that the divine has taken your resolution seriously. Of course, there is a humorous side to it, a very uh, well-known and very, uh, was somebody very close to mother, I wouldn't uh, name, uh, once said after decades, uh, he says, now I know what is Shurabindo's yoga. First, create difficulties, then keep solving them. So, <laughs> in, a, in a sense, it is true. Of course, <laughs> and perhaps not the way it is meant. The difficulties are there. So she says, there is also the fact <laughs> that if somebody has a hundred difficulties, it means he will have a tremendous realization. And that is why she says something very interesting. Those who are meant to do this yoga of transformation, they will do it anywhere. Mother's words. Those who are not, who don't want to do it, can do it nowhere. This her words. And she is telling us that hundred difficulties, it means he will have a tremendous realization. Provided, of course, there is the provision there are in him patience and endurance and he keeps the aspiring flame of Agni burning against those defects. So the one thing that is required is endurance not to give up. In one of her short messages when she speaks of the uh, psychological perfection flower and she gives a meaning to each petal, when she speaks of endurance and perseverance, she says, victory comes to the most persevering. So this is one of the tests. People join, we all join into the way with a beautiful call, the flute is heard and like gopis we run. But between gopi and Krishna, suddenly a kansa comes. <laughs> and one struggles with this kansa. This is the path. And in agenda also towards the end she says, Endurance, 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 the one thing that is required is endurance. Nothing can happen, nothing can be achieved without endurance. So she's telling us two things which are required, patience and endurance. And, of course, to keep the aspiring flame of Agni burning against those defects. Even on deathbed, even during the last breath, if one can say, Lord, at least this moment let this difficulty be conquered. Because it's not personal, it is something universal. And remember the last word with which she ends always. And remember the grace of the divine is generally proportioned to your difficulties. In one of her places she says that the grace that one receives is exactly proportionate to the difficulty and the problem. And then she says atom to atom, it is not even a little less nor a little more. So the grace of the divine is proportioned to your difficulties. So if we can turn towards the grace and keep on persevering, this is the path. So I think this completes the whole thing about the 
essential aspects of not the whole thing essential aspects of purification for two weeks two tuesdays we'll take a break after that uh, the third tuesday from today um, i think it will be uh, whatever date uh, maybe 27th or 28th we will resume till october end and um, uh, we'll put up the notice and we'll take up the uh, other two remaining aspects of this yoga spiritualization and the supramental change